Isikosa Chess uh, Terminology book earlier this week by South Africa's international chess master Watukovese is a first for the country. The book standardizes the uh, translation of chess terms from English to Isikosa using dynamic names which draw from Kosa culture for each of the chess terms. Here to tell us more from our Cape Town uh, studios uh, about the chess book uh, Ut Utimba, as it is called in Isitosa, is of course Wati Kubasa. Good morning, welcome to Morning Live. Morning, thank you for having me. What, what inspired this book? Well, I would say, you know, uh, in my numerous uh, contact with, with young uh, kids from rural areas and also the townships, I noticed that there's uh, some kind of a disconnect when it came to, to chess because you actually had to to explain the different uh, pieces. Uh, you know, you'd have to explain what a knight is, uh, what a rook is. And you find that even before we start playing the game, there already is this perception that this is a foreign game. And, uh, you know, hence, I think there hasn't been as much interest as there should be. The, that is actually has been the, the driving force behind the book to make it dynamic, to make the, 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 the young players and, and even old uh, to actually identify with the book and the pieces. And, and actually this actually, you know, makes the pieces come alive and it creates a new dynamism that uh, will draw more players to the game. Let's talk about why specifically it's also out of 11 official languages. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Actually, the very first book that I wrote was an Isizulu manual mm -hmm. uh, for the specific reasons because we have more uh, Zulu speakers in terms of numbers. Um, then after that, I then translated the Isizulu into uh, all the official languages other than English and Afrikaans for a simple reason that there, there has been many works that have been written in these languages. Um, then the next question was obviously the, the, the question of accreditation because, you know, if you're going to go and create new names, because remember there has been nothing that has been written in indigenous languages about chess, I had to create names for pieces, for, 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 for everything. Mm. So um, obviously the, 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 the whole process took about nine years. And uh, last year I, 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 I was lucky enough to, 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 to partner with uh, uh, the, the, the Western Cape uh, uh, government um, through their HOD in, in the Cultural and Sports Department, Advocate Lyndon Bauer, who, 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 who actually saw the vision for the book. And we then worked uh, with language specialists and, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, and the, the fruit of that labor was the, the, the book. Who is this book aimed at and what are you trying to achieve with this? Well, um, first of all, let, let, let me just, uh, to answer that question, who it's aimed at, let me, uh, because someone might ask, but yeah, but why, why the need? The point is that, you know, uh, just to give a very quick historic background of, of, of chess, chess started off in India, and there it used to be called Shatarang. And then afterwards, through the Vikings, the Crusades, and the various wars, it made its way to Europe. And when it uh, reached Europe, when, when it was still in India, it used to have boats, uh, uh, advisors to the king, elephants, uh, as a reflection of their uh, war formations. And when it, it reached Europe, obviously, it, it, it changed and it, 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 reached, uh, it sort of uh, reflected the society there. You know, so you had the king and the queen and then the clergy, the bishops very close to them, the knights, the rooks and the pawns. Uh, but what was interesting for me is that in my many travels playing in, in different countries in, in Europe, I noticed that uh, uh, not in all languages are the pieces the same. For an example, a rook in, in, in German is called der Läufer, and in, 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 which is a runner. Uh, and in Russian is called slon, which is uh, an elephant. It's also called officier, which is an officer. So you start to see that the different countries name the pieces differently to, 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 for, for some dynamism so that they can identify with the game. And, and, and uh, so in South Africa, the point is that the, the book is aimed at a young player uh, from anywhere, you know, a rural area who, who just learns this game and all of a sudden has to identify with it. So it's names that you have to identify with. Uh, I'll make an example. The rook is called Umbaimbai 
which is a big gun. And if you look at the movement of the rook, it makes sense because it shoots straight and sideways. So I've, it, it has become <coughs> dynamic. Instead of it becoming a, being a rook or a castle, I've mm. made it into a gun. And uh, a bishop, for an example, in Zulu, I call it Inkabi, which yeah. is a, you know, a hitman, like the slang word. Uh, but in Kosa, it's called Intola, which is a spy. So you start to realize that the book is aimed actually at the various communities because the interesting thing about uh, games in, 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 in townships and rural areas is that they are very, very vocal. Now, uh, I started playing, for an example, I learned from my father. And when they played, they were very, very vocal. And you, they, they were, guys would bust out singing and, and all this stuff. So the point is that it is aimed at this audience, you know, where uh, uh, someone can identify with the game, translate it, and, 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 and be vocal about it. So I expect that... Uh, you know, don't be surprised if in a, in a few uh, months' time you're walking uh, past some taxi rank and you see a group of, of, of people standing and, and laughing and, so, and, and two players playing and, and mocking each other and talking as happens with each and every game. All right. Let's talk about, and you, you, you've touched a lot on the terminology that uh, that you've used in the book. I mean, as for instance, utinjiwe, is, which means uh, checkmate. Did you have to go via people to, you know, to confirm that can I use this word? You know, would it be, would I be using it in the right context? Was that some of the, the work that went into putting the book together? Absolutely. I mean, in this book, I'm actually very grateful to Mr. Olisa Chongolo who uh, I worked with from the, he's an expert in the language department of the government of the Western Cape. And uh, we went through that very process where, you know, I had to first of, first of all uh, explain to him chess, some terms, some rules. And, uh, you know, he was enthusiastic about it going, going into the game. And then afterwards, we then decided on the terminology that not only just the terms, but we were looking for some dynamism as well. Now, for an example, Utinji, where is it comes from uh, uh, in the olden days where you had two uh, kings or chiefs fighting uh, the other chief would not be killed but would be captured and when he was captured he would be sort of annexed and him and his homestead you know would, would fall under this this, this king and uh, that process is called tinjiwe so now that is logical that it should be checkmate and the game itself is called utimba which now becomes the process of trying to reach Way. Mm. So it makes sense. All right. Now, can you tell us how you came up with, you know, um, the other thing before I even ask that question, chess, why, what has it taught you about your love for the game? And where did you, when did this meeting uh, f first start? Well, you see, uh, I started playing chess when I was, when I was four. And uh, uh, my father uh, was a very strong club player and he taught me the game and uh, I never look back I mean on the sporting side I've, I've, I've continued playing I have uh, uh, become African South African junior champion senior champion uh, I was African champion in 2001 I've played professionally uh, but that's just on the sporting side but the actual uh, 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 love for the game is what the game uh, does for you and if you look at the benefits, I mean, there's been numerous studies that have been uh, uh, conducted and, 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 and documented. Uh, chess, there's, you know, it, 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 it impacts positively on, on the cognitive abilities because you're talking about concentration just from the top of my head. Concentration, visualization, uh, memory recall, uh, pattern recognition, uh, mathematics, because remember the chessboard itself is divided into coordinates. Uh, so even before you move the pieces, you are actually talking about coordinates. And if you think about mathematics, like, you know, the, the grid, the X and Y axis, uh, that concept already is there. And that concept one can get from the age of as young as, say, six or seven. Mm. Um, so the point, though, is if you look at around the world, look at the European Union, they passed a, a resolution that they want chess to be introduced in, in, as a curriculum. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, in, in, into the curriculum in their schools. And uh, some countries have already started this process. Uh, 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 Georgia, some parts of Germany, uh, and so on. Uh, so if you look at South Africa and you look at where chess is popular, um, you will see that it is very popular in the private schools. Mm -hmm. 
I All mean, right. if we were to, to look at how many private schools do not have chess, I, I'm, I'm sure it should be, probably be less than 10%. Okay. Um, but my argument is that, you know, if we want some kind of interventions into our schooling systems that will beef up the kids' uh, minds and, and, and make them school ready mm. and, and, and to be creative and think out of the box, right. where chess should be popular is the township schools and the rural schools. Okay. And, and, and the point is... Uh, with the project that I'm, 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 I'm going for, that is the idea. The idea is to, is, to, is to create a hype and to make it a fun game that then the, any kid, you know, uh, uh, even a, a rural a kid will not have a blockade of, All say, right. language or anything. And then once they start playing and enjoying the game, the next benefits will then immediately come after that. All right, Watu, thank you so much for talking to us. Congratulations again on a job well done on that book. Speaking to us about his new Isikosa chess terminology book is International Chess Master Watu Kobese. The book standardizes the translation of chess terms from English to Isikosa and was developed in conjunction with the Western Cape Department of Cultural Affairs and Sport. Let's take